Hi, now this is column method subtraction level two, and this builds on skills learnt in a, in a previous column method subtraction video, level one. Now, what level two does is we are introducing you to the concept of compensating or borrowing. Now, uh, this is new to you, and basically what that means is, is that if you look at the first example, and if you look in the units column, what you'll find is that the three is actually smaller than the four. So if we did have to take those away, we're actually gonna get a negative number. Now, this didn't bother us in level one because all the top numbers in the column were larger than the bottom, so this didn't affect us, okay? So this is level two, and this is introducing the concept of borrowing and compensating, and it's all to do with the fact that in certain columns, the, the top number will be smaller than the bottom. Now that doesn't mean that it's the whole top number that's gonna be smaller than the bottom, it's just the individual numbers in each column may be smaller than the bottom, and so we have to um, do a new concept called compensating our borrowing to get us around that. Now before we do that, there's one important thing that we must, must stress, and it is this. And that's just popped up on your screen there. And this thing is, you should always check to see is the top number bigger than the bottom, okay? And this is a check that you should do every time you do a column method subtraction calculation. Now, I didn't mention it in level one because they were all bigger on the top. So from now on, you need to check every single column to see if the top number is indeed smaller than, the top number is indeed bigger than the bottom. But if it's not, this method is gonna show you how to do this if the top number is not bigger than the bottom. Right, so let's crack on with an example then. So what we need to do is we're going to go through each column and check to see if indeed the top number is bigger than the bottom. So if we go for example number one, if we go with the units column, so now we've got three take away four. Now three is indeed smaller than four. So what we need to do is we need to do something called compensating, which is the thing I'm going to introduce in level two today. So we're going to reduce four by one. So we're going to put a strike through it to identify that it's going to get smaller or we're not using the four anymore. Then we're going to reduce it by one. So that becomes a three. And then we're going to put that one next to the three. And so that 13 now, that three, sorry, is now going to be read as a 13. Now it looks awkward because we have to read it diagonally, but it's still a 13. And now what we're going to do, we're going to subtract 4 from 13 this time. So rather than 3, we're going to take it away from 13. So 13 subtract 4 gives me an answer of 9. And then if we move on to the tenths column, 3 take away 1 gives me a 2. And so that's my answer to question number 1. So it's 29. Okay, so now if we move on to example number two, so exactly the same process, we are taking each column in turn just to see if the top number is bigger or smaller than the bottom. So I take the units column, so in this case, six is bigger than two, so we can just subtract that one like from level one. So six take away two is four. Move on to my tens column. Now again, do the check. It's smaller than the bottom, so we need to compensate or borrow again. So strike it through and reduce this one by one. So then that, that becomes 1, because 2 take away 1 is 1. And then the 1 that we've taken away goes next to the 6. And so we're reading that as a 16. So 16 subtract 7, and again, that one gives me an answer of 9. Then move on to the hundreds column. 1 take away 1 becomes 0. And now we're going to read that as a 94. So there's our answer for that one. Quick example number 3. So zero take away two, well again, now zero is smaller than two, so we're gonna to have to borrow again. So we're gonna borrow one from this one. So that now reduces to a zero because we're taking the one away. And then that now, we'll read that as a 10. 10 subtract two, that gives me an answer of eight. Move on to the tens column. Zero subtract zero, that gives me nothing. And then three subtract one, that gives me an answer of two. So the answer to question three is 208. And now question number four, so four columns this time, so it's a number in the thousands, and we're going to approach each column in turn. So four take away three gives me an answer of one. One take away nine, one smaller, because I'm checking each column in turn, remember. So I'm going to have to borrow. So three reduces to a two, and then the one that I've used to do that then gets placed next to this one. So 11 take away nine gives me an answer of two. Hundreds column, two take away one is one. And then thousands column, three take away two is one. So my answer to question four is 1,121. Okay, now one thing that you'll notice is that it's not dependent on whether it's a units column, tens column, or a hundreds column as to whether you're 
having to borrow. It's it's completely independent of that. So just be aware. And the only way to get good is by mentally at first checking off each column. Is it smaller, bigger, etc. And after a while, it will become automatic and you won't even have to think about it. But like anything at first, you just have to practice it. So those are four simple examples uh, that just introduce this concept of borrowing. So that's uh, level two done. So again, I hope you found that explanation useful. Um, so that's level two. So that's like your introduction to compensating slash borrowing slash whatever you want to call it because lots of people call it lots of different things. So those are four practice questions. Probably take about two minutes to do. Have a double at those and then um, we can go through them in the answer walkthrough. Um, if not, I'll see you in level three. Thanks for watching this video from Math From Scratch. Um, if you find it useful, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual nice things, um, and I will see you shortly. Bye-bye.